The door for our trap is going to be something of a rectangle. Now we're going to take our larger scrap and we're going to need to cut this so that the the way this will sit is this will sit on the trap like this. That way this curve will match the curve of the trap. So we're going to want to measure across 17 squares. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 squares. Once you get to 17 squares, you want to cut those out. And then we want to cut in 15 squares. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And then we go across, so just to make sure, 1, 2, 3, Okay, so now we just cut across to complete the door. So here's our completed door. And the way this will work is once we have our cylinder completed, we'll put this over and it'll fit nicely like this. You can see on our trap, it already has a door, but the door is going to sit just like this, and then you can lift it to get into the trap. So that's our finished door. Next we're going to cut our anti-escape devices. You're going to need to cut them this way, again, just like the door, you're going to cut them with the curve, and they're going to be almost three squares wide they're going to be 13 squares long. So what I mean by almost 13 squares wide is what we we're going to do or almost three squares wide is you're going to measure one two three squares and then you're going to cut inside of the third square and we're actually going to be cutting all of these little hanging pieces off. So what that's going to do is give us two full squares and then a little barbed edge and that's going to help prevent the uh, crayfish, help keep them from escaping. Because when they come up to that pointed edge they won't have any place to hold on. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this out and I'm just going to go, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So thirteen squares. And almost three. So let me go ahead and clear this side off real quick. And here's our anti-escape device. So when we put this together, it'll look like that. And this will go on the inside of our cone, or on the outside of our cone, but the inside of our trap. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the other piece, and then we'll start cutting the pieces for the bait box. The bait box is pretty straightforward. You could cut these pieces out of the rest of the scraps. So you're going to need six pieces total. The largest is going to be this one. This is 10 by 8 squares. And if you can see, it's going with the curve here. So once you've got this, you fold over three of the squares, leaving yourself with three squares and then five squares on the side. And this will be the cover. Next, you're going to need to cut the bottom. And this is ten squares, ten squares wide, five squares deep. And then you're going to need two side pieces, and these are three squares high and 
10 squares wide. And then you're going to need two end pieces, and these are five squares deep and three squares tall. And when you put these all together, you make your bait box. So I'm going to go over that again when we actually put the bait box together. To put this all together, we're basically going to do just a simple whip stitch all the way down and all the way back. We're only going to be overlapping half an inch here. So basically, one line of squares is going to overlap another line of squares. That way we have a really nice secure connection. And to do this, I like to take my twine and just measure out a roughly three times the length of my trap. And I also give myself about two extra inches on each length. So I take my line, I overlap my two edges here, so you can see I have these two sides and I overlap them by one square. I take the cord and just run it through till I pull about six inches out. And then it's all about just going through. and just whipping this. So it's kind of hard to see right now, but I'll do this a couple more times and once it gets a little more stable, it'll be easier to see what I'm talking about. All right, so I've got it zoomed in so you guys can see. What I do is I just take a little tab here, bring it in through, and then pull that out. When I pull that tight, I have one done. So I go ahead and I do that again, push a tab through. Whoop, let's see if I can grab that. Pull that out. And there it is. So you just keep going until you get down to the end. You see I've done this so far. So I go from the top here, all the way down to the end, then all the way back, and then we're going to tie it off. So I'm going to finish this off. And then when we get to the end, I'll show you how to tie it off. All right, so I've got this. I'm coming down near to the end here. So I just want to finish looping with this first cord because I don't like my actual ends to be on the very end of the trap where they're more likely to be worn down. So I just keep doing that, looping until they meet. There we go. So now I'll bring this back through the middle, because they're both coming through the inside. I'll bring both of them up. And then from there on the inside, I just tie them off. Is a really simple tie and then I double that and I do that one more time just to make sure that it's really tight and then I take this whole thing kind of twist it together and I tie a simple overhand knot and I find that this just keeps everything together and keeps it from fraying. But it doesn't require any splicing or any complicated finishing. So once I get my overhand knot, I just sort of whoops, 
once I get my overhand knot, I just sort of push it down to the bottom, tighten it up, and there you go. So you can see we've got this seam is nice and secure. And that's pretty much how you put the trap together. So next we're going to work on the cone. Alright, now we just have to sew our cone together. So you take your cone, and just like we did with the main cylinder, you want to overlap one row of squares. And I'm just going to do the same thing I did with the with the actual cylinder and I'm just going to go ahead and start wrapping and overlapping or start wrapping both of these edges together so I'm just going to keep wrapping and I'm going to show you what that looks like when it's done